Hey kids, it's Matt here. Let me get you set up on a sharing here. Get a new page up. Mirror out the iPad. So in this one, we're gonna look at delta G in terms of equilibrium now. We're coming down towards the end. And, you know, we're looking, this one is gonna be delta G relative to G prime, that's G under standard conditions, plus RT, how is it gonna change when we change the temperature and we're, it's gonna have an effect on our gases, and what about the concentration of things? So LNQ, Q is our reaction quotient, still the products over the reactants. And so our problem is very straightforward. It says calculate delta G at 700 K for this reaction, we're gonna take some carbon, solid graphite, throw it into water, vapor, okay? And see if we can get carbon monoxide and H2 gas. Now, I'm not gonna to lie to you. We have delta G here under standard conditions, 25 degrees, one atmosphere of pressure, and then we have the new pressures that we're gonna be given. So let's take a look at what happens with this. First thing we wanna do is calculate delta G. And so we've got our values, and this is just gonna be a matter of delta G being products minus reactants. And so one mole of CO times negative 137 kilojoules per mole, plus one times zero, we don't really worry about that minus our reactants, one times zero, plus now one mole of H2O vapor times a negative 229 kilojoules per mole. And this looks like it's gonna give us just a relatively positive 92 kilojoules. That's my delta G prime. Those are standard conditions, one atmosphere, 25 degrees. This is a non-spontaneous at room temperature. You throw a little bit of water vapor, not even really steam because it's not 100 degrees, water vapor onto graphite, nothing's going to happen. Very non-spontaneous. Now let's change those pressures. Let's really drop those pressures low. And to do that, Let's see what we get with our reaction quotient. That quotient is gonna be products over reactants. And so in that case, I'm gonna have the pressure of CO to the first times the pressure of H2 to the first over the pressure of H2O to the first no coefficients going on here, really straightforward. And we're not gonna include that carbon in there because, well, it's a solid, it doesn't have a pressure. So if we put these values in, now we've gotta find them. The pressure of H2O is going on the bottom. That's the 0.85. And we are dealing with atmospheres here. And now we have the CO, which is one times 10 to the negative fourth. And we have our H2, two times 10 to the negative fourth. And if we punch that into Texas Instruments, it's gonna tell us this is 2.35 times 10 to the negative eighth. atmospheres. So now we have G, now we have Q, and now we can put these together and find out what happens under non-standard conditions. So in this case, delta G, non-standard, equals delta G standard plus RT ln Q. Let's plug in our values. We're gonna take and put this G into joules. So 92 kilojoules is 9.2 times 10 to the fourth joules. Why do we have to do that? Because we're using R of 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. 
Kelvin's was 700. And the LN, that's a natural log, kids. LN of what we just calculated of Q235, 10 to the negative eighth. At that point, we're not really worried about atmospheres. And we're going to find out that delta G equals a negative 1.02 times 10 to the positive fourth joules. And that's going to be equal to a negative 10.2 kilojoules. All of a sudden, because we cranked the temperature way up to 700 and we dropped those pressures on down, the equilibrium now shifted. And this is going to be spontaneous. And that's really our next topic here that I want to talk to you about is when G is negative, this is spontaneous. This reaction is going to proceed from left to right. Well, that happened here because of what we did with the pressures and the temperatures. We were varying it with Q. Well, what happens when we look at G and equilibrium? Now it has a much different take. G And it's really just going to build off of what we just did. At equilibrium, delta G equals zero. Not G prime, not G standard. G under the conditions you have, G will be zero. And if that's the case, then if delta G is less than zero, delta G is negative, then that means that delta G of the reactants was bigger than delta G of the products. And this is going to shift to the right. It's going to proceed in the forward direction. And that's what we just had. We just had a delta G that was negative 10 kilojoules. So what does that mean? It's spontaneous. This reaction is going to proceed towards the products that were not at equilibrium yet. <clears throat> Conversely, if we look at this in terms of delta G being greater than zero, then what we have is delta G of the reactants are too small compared to delta G of the products. And that means this is going to shift shift to the left. So let's look at a problem that uses this. Let's take this same type of problem that we just had. We had carbon, solid, we had H2O, we have CO, we have H2. These are gases, 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 and our one solid. We are told, whoops, excuse me, wrong reaction kids, sorry. My bad, that was the last example. And you already know that. Okay. Here's this one. Is in the last video where we did standards, we did this reaction where we had Cr2O3 as a solid plus 2Al. Look at those solids. Goes to Al2O3. That's also solid plus two chromiums. And we calculated in that last one that delta G prime was negative 537 
kilojoules. This was in the last video that we did. Okay, feel free to go back and look at that. Now, if we're told that, what we want to know is calculate the value of K at 25 degrees. So in this case, if If delta G prime equals delta G plus RT ln Q, if we shift this to equilibrium, we say at equilibrium, delta G prime is zero equals delta G plus RT. And now instead of Q, we have ln K. Well, a quick rearrangement of that will tell us that delta G equals negative, throw the RT ln K over to the other side. And what we want to solve in this problem is for K, so ln K equals delta G over negative RT. And so in this case, we should be able to take our delta G. So now let me get to the solution again. G was 537 kilojoules. We got to turn that into joules here, kids. So 5.37, 10 to the fifth joules over negative R, 8.31 joules per Kelvin mole. And 25 degrees Celsius is 298K. Thank goodness your calculators can handle this. And solve that, and K is going to be equal to 1.3 times 10 to the 94th. What does that mean? This reaction is very spontaneous, and the equilibrium lies far to the right, that this is going to occur because G is so big in the negative side, it's super spontaneous, and that's going to shift this equilibrium over to the right side. This reaction is going to occur and favor the products. I'm Smith. Had a good couple problems for you here. I hope they helped. I'll see you in the next video.